my name is ragu in this video we are going to discuss top 25 spring web module frequently asked questions let's start the session first question what is a spring web module this actually module given by spring framework like other modules like spring core spring data and all if you want to implement mvc based applications web applications or restful applications web service applications we are going to use this module this module completely implemented using http protocol standard like get post put delete operations response status codes and all it's internally using by using this web module we are going to implement applications like client server application like browser to server concept or a server to server application that means web services like book my show interacting with google pay like paytm one application to another application second one what is mvc mvc is actually a software design pattern it's an architectural design pattern mvc stands for model view and controller it is actually separating of three things that is actually separating of model separating of view logic and separating of controller and develop the application in parallel what is spring mvc question number three you see spring mvc is actually given by a java framework it is used to implement dynamic web application applications that follows model view and controller model indicates data it can be a single object or a collection of objects it is actually shared between view and controller controller means simply it's a code it's a class that actually contains a business logic and application we can also call it request processing code also view is a final representation that is given to end customers our client machines here view is actually java based view again it's a jsp with the jstl or apache velocity team leaf free marker and so on question four what is the front controller in spring mvc each and every request is taken by a predefined servlet in spring mvc that is called dispatcher servlet this is a predefined class exists in the package org dot spring framework dot web dot servlet package this one we need need to, we need not to define but it actually takes care of all the requests and it will redirect it to an appropriate controller as a programmer we need to configure this dispatcher servlet in web.xml file by writing servlet tag servlet mapping tag and all so what is the flow of spring mvc every request that is actually made by client will be taken care by dispatcher servlet as a friend controller this one takes help of handler mapping to identify an exact controller and its method from the XML configuration. Once controller is executed, it returns some output along with the view details that is called model and view. Finally, with the help of view resolver, it gets a view data and reads into model representation. A final UI is created and rendered into HTML format given back to client. Question number six. What are the advantages of Spring MVC framework? There are a lot to discuss but mainly it is actually lightweight compared to any other mvc frameworks here we have a single servlet mechanism and that comes without any ui representation you can add dynamically so it's a lightweight only single servlet all are simple classes rapid application development you have to concentrate on controllers and uis only so if ui is changed also it is not going to give much effect you can implement them in parallel flexible mapping we have a lot of annotations and easy to configure and easy to redirect okay we can use get mapping post mapping such annotations request bad annotations so we can implement this application in a very simple manner question seven which annotations are used for http request methods generally if a request coming from any client that is http request we have to map with one different types of methods like get mapping post mapping put mapping patch mapping delete map get mapping is actually representing of fetching the data from server to client post mapping indicates creating a new resource at server put mapping indicates modifying the existed data at server patch indicates partially modifying the data at server delete mapping indicates removing the data at server if you are working with web mvc we use get and post if you are working with web rest get post put patch delete all are used what is the major difference between at the rate controller and rest controller it's one of the mostly asked question at the rate controller and rest controllers there's actually major difference is at the rate response body at the rate controller plus response body is equal to at the rate rest controller so here at the rate response body 
we need not to handle manually in case of at the rate rest controller concept of course you can even use at the rate controller and you can convert that body into manually but here at the rate controller generally returns a view resolver based output finally response will be there okay but that is actually going to be html representation mostly so what are the request body and response body annotations and why these are actually used if you are working with a spring rest based application mostly these two are used if an incoming request is actually contains json data or xml data you want to convert that into an object format then at the rate request body is used that is actually called deserializing the data converting json or xml to object format it's internally uses http message converter at the rate response body works on our method return type request body works on parameter response body works on return type. how to map controller class and its methods with a url okay i just want to connect a url and http method to controller code how it can be done we can use at the rate request mapping annotation as a base annotation at class level and method level remember other http method annotations are there get post put delete those you can apply only at method but here i want to map the url at controller and method level so we can use at the rate request mapping so we have to specify the url and the method types all the details so you can see some example i'm just mentioning at the rate request mapping on a class level at the rate request mapping on a method level we can use so what is the purpose of at the rate path variable annotation in spring mvc generally if you want to extract the data of an incoming request uri that is sent by using slash symbol representation and you want to read that by using method handler parameters so you can see a small example request mapping there we are mentioning in the curly braces id that curly brace indicates a value comes at runtime slash show slash 10 slash low slash 200 like that a value comes here but we have to read that same name by using at the rate path variable to the handler method means controller method parameter we have to mention the data type and the local variable name continues to the path variable annotation. What is the role of response body annotation in Spring MVC? Generally, MVC applications returns HTTP format, but you want to represent a JSON output or as XML output, then we can add at the rate response body on top of your methods. You can see a small example. So just mention the response body. So here the return type is product to payload. Display method return type is product to payload. Product payload assumption, it's a class. Okay, a simple POJO class having variables like ID, code, and amount. This is converted into a JSON representation. Once a display method is executed, it gives JSON. Out. What do you understand by validations in Spring MVC? If an end user makes a request, that request contains some inputs. That inputs I want to validate or I want to restrict, then we can use a validation annotation concept. If you want to use this validation concept, your Spring version must be four or higher. And you must add bean validation API dependence in the pom.xml or build.gradle file. And some validations are at the rate not null that will not accept null values at the rate pattern. You can mention something like name should have four characters, four or uppercase letters, at the rate email, at the rate past is generally used for date concept. We can use future and past, at the rate not blank, not null, and empty space also not allowed. We have to use at the rate valid annotation along with at the rate request body or model attribute. At the rate valid with request body or at the rate valid with model attribute. Which annotations are used to define global exception handler class? Here we use controller advice or rest controller advice along with exception handler. Generally, we can use try catch block, but in case of repeated try catch blocks are there, I want to define for common all this exception on some place so that I will be having a generic exception handling code we can use. If you are using web MVC, at the rate control advice if we are using web rest at the rate rest control advice we need to define one class and annotate with control advice or rest control advice then we need to define one method and on top of that we have to mention at the rate exception handler in parameter we can mention exception type like user not found exception insufficient balance exception parameter type exception like you can mention exception types explain some response status codes this also mostly asked question in real time 200 indicates okay that's actually success 400 bad request your input data is invalid 401 it's unauthorized login request failed 403 it's a for done you logged in successfully but you have no access to 
resources 404 url not found or url not exist 405 method not allowed you made a get request but program is post 500 internal server error or exceptionate application size these are the few response status code mostly you see in real time what is cross origin concept in spring web generally cross is actually a security mechanism that is also called a corS cross origin resource sharing if a request is coming from web browsers by using a javascript applications if it wants to produce or consume we are going to be saying okay it's not allowed by default if you are working with integration like angular application react js application or any node based applications that runs in the browser then in spring web application side we have to add one annotation at the rate cross origin by mentioning the url here you are like your sample eight zero eight zero it can be four two double zero nine triple zero three triple zero that depends on the application that you are running on the port that front end applications we used to call if you mention this then the request is actually allowed else it is not it says cors is blocked mostly you see this kind of exceptions if you're integrating with angular or react js what is init binder in spring web request is dispatched to the controller before controller i want to do some pre-processing or converting some logics for each request then int binder is used this actually web data init binder is also called generally if a client application is sending the date that comes in a text representation or string I want to convert to a date class, then we can do using init binder. Even you are getting a string and I want to convert to some user type of class by taking some two, three parameters, then also we can use it. Simply we can call pre-processing logic, converting some formats of the code. So what is the difference between path variable and request param annotations or explain them? It is also mostly asked question. Lot of people says path variable and request param in that path variable works only in the rest request param works in web no it's actually not like that both can be used in web mvs and rest but the difference is sending the data if you're sending the data by using at the rate path variable then data can be sent along with the request url by using slash symbol and directly data that follows the order you can see a small example slash hello slash 100 and slash ragu so value 100 is actually bound to id and slash ragu is the name that is bound to the variable name there is no key value order must be followed coming to request param it is actually called query string starts from question mark symbol okay key is equal to value you can send in any order and that's actually read by using at the rate request param so in a simple point request param extracts the data from query string where path variable extract the data from uri path. why do we need view resolver in spring mvc view resolver if you are using that's actually purpose is to provide the final output rendering the model to web browser so in simple creates a dynamic html files we used to call internal resource view resolver is a mostly used view resolver in web mvc we have even some other view resolvers like abstract caching view resolver xml view resolver url based view resolver and so on so view resolver is finally responsible to provide the output that will be displayed in the browser what is the use of at the rate model attribute annotation question number 20 if you want to bind the data that is actually coming from the client and you want to bind to your method parameter of course you can return type also so that it can be used as the model attribute consider we are using one html form like registration form inquiry form login form payment form that i want to convert it to an object so like employee object you want to convert then you can use model attribute and you can read that object into your method parameter the simple syntax looks like model attribute you have to mention the object name then followed by the class name and local variable name is at the rate control and rest control are stereotypes answer is yes both rest controller and control notations are stereotype at the rate controller is a subtype of component or specialization of a component component is a parent control is a child you can call where rest control is a subtype of controller hierarchy comes like at the rate component, at the rate controller, at the rate rest controller. At the rate rest controller internally contains response body, but not only that, it even indicates, hey, it's a restful application even. Lot of people says, why can't we use at the rate control with response body? Yes, you can use and you can get the output, but the standard is given at the rate rest controller, you have to use that. If you are implementing restful web services and request processing. What is the major difference between Spring Core and Spring MVC? 
lot of people will ask this kind of question to confuse the people actually spring core is a basic concept that is to handle the object mechanisms and all where spring mvc built on top of spring core spring core is actually called as ioc container dependency injections by using bean class concepts handling of objects and all where mvc internally uses ioc mechanism and works for web application implementations spring core concepts of course there is a container system beans scheduling aop these are all part of spring core what are the ways of reading data from from in spring mvc if a request form is submitted you can use a legacy technique http servlet request as a method parameter and you can use request dot get parameter but the defaults always written string representation you have to do manual conversion we can use at the rate request param annotation that is also used to read the data it even supports type conversion we can use at the rate model attribute to read entire form into one all our method parameters only here what is at the rate response entity representation or response entity of generic type in spring rest if you are using rest controllers the final output is response entity it is actually used for written type in the rest controllers generally response entity contains body that is called response body response http headers and response status code if you are returning a class type non string representation like employee list of details that will be converted into xml or json formats global formats by using at the rate response body converter question number 25 why at the rate request header is used in spring web if a request is made that actually contains header and body section header contains header parameters in the form of key and value which are sent by client i want to read only header parameters like authorization header content type header request format header even some custom headers i can pass my own key and values then we can use at the rate request header annotation example you can see request header mention the key name data type and local variable